Hi, I'm Kristen from Tulsa Regional STEM Alliance. Today we're going to practice our math facts and play a game at the same time. Bingo is a fun game you probably already know how to play. In traditional bingo, someone calls out numbers. And if you have the numbers on your bingo card, you mark them off until someone gets five in a row or some other pattern and shouts out, bingo! Today we're going to make our own factor bingo game. Factors are numbers you can multiply together to get another number. For example, 9 multiplied by 5 equals 45. In this instance, 9 and 5 are the factors and 45 is the product. The term product just means the answer to a multiplication problem. A number can have many factors. Let's think about numbers we can multiply together to get 16. I know that 2 times 8 equals 16. 4 times 4 also equals 16. And 1 times 16 equals 16. So the numbers 2, 8, 4, 1, and 16 are all factors of 16. Understanding factors makes it easier to work with fractions and to find patterns in numbers. And finding patterns is very helpful in solving all types of problems, not just math problems. So in this activity, we're going to practice our math facts while we play bingo. You'll need a deck of cards, a pencil and paper, small items like beans, cereal or pasta, or you can even cut up some little squares of paper and you'll use these to cover your bingo card. You can also use a calculator to help check your answers, but it's not required to play this game. First, you want to remove all the face cards and the joker from the deck of cards. Face cards are the king, the joker, or the king, the queen, and the jack. And then you also want to take out the joker. And for this activity, we will use uh, an ace to represent one. Next, you're going to create your bingo card. You will draw a five by five grid on a piece of paper. So that's just five squares by five squares. So you will have 25 squares in a grid all together. Next, you're going to fill in your grid with any number that you want, but you want to be thoughtful and strategic about the numbers that you choose. A deck of cards includes the numbers one through 10 when we use the ace to represent one. So all of the numbers on your bingo card should be products of these numbers. Don't repeat any number on your card, they should all be different. So when I think about numbers I could add to my card, I think 18 would be a good number to add because I know that 18 has several factors. Nine times two equals 18 and six times three equals 18. But 33 would not be a good number to add because there is no way to get the pro product 33 based on any of these two cards in the deck. So if you need help thinking about numbers to add to your card, you can just start pulling out some cards and multiplying them. So I could pull out a two and remember ace equals one. So two times one is two. So two would be a good number to put on my card. Um, each player should create their own unique bingo card with different numbers. After you've made your card, it's time to play. So I've made my card filled with all different um, numbers that I know I can multiply together in this deck of cards. So to play, player one will draw two cards from the deck. So I've got a 10 and I've got a nine. So multiply those two factors together. 10 times nine is 90. Now check your card to see if you have that number. Yay, I've got 90. And then cover it up if you have it. Next, player two will draw two cards. So we've got a six and a five. Multiply those two numbers together and we get 30. Check your card to see if you have that number. Oh, I sure do, right there, and cover it up. Each player takes a turn until the first person to cover five squares in any direction wins. If you run out of cards before someone gets a bingo, just reshuffle the cards and keep going until you have a winner. I hope you have a lot of fun practicing your math facts. You can find more STEM activities on our website at tulsastem.org. Thanks for watching.